Hey folks, how's it going? So I find myself on the way to Sungai Besar near Sabak Burnham and uh, I'm taking the interior road uh, I could have taken Lata but no, I decided to take the interior road for a shakedown drive of the E36 and she is just singing singing along with this uh, on this road okay, the, the road surface ain't too too great okay, there's a lot of undulations I mean, no potholes or anything just a, a lot of undulations it's not very smooth but the car is so brilliant I'm just you know playing with the gears and just driving along and I have to keep reminding myself this car is more than 20 years old and still hmm BMW hmm well done the E36 to me has always been um, the last generation let's put it this way last generation of 3 series before BMW got into computerization and electronics oh this road is just so nice I'm going to try and turn the camera around a little while but anyway they before they got into a lot of computerization, a lot of sensors, a lot of electronics uh, for the E46. And uh, the E46 was uh, one of those cars that started the game with BMW and it led to all kinds of computerization and electronics and sensors, things like the iDrive and all that, which is not in the E46, of course. Uh, don't have a go at me at the comments. I know there's no iDrive in the E46, but what I'm saying is the E46 represents a turning point for BMW when they started getting heavy into electronics, heavy into computerization. And the cars after that just kept getting more and more and more technologically complicated, for want of a better expression. They were technological tour de forces in terms of the automobile industry is concerned. I mean, the iDrive, for example, has now found its way into, into various other car makes uh, and models, of course, in different, different guises. But it all started with that, you know. Um, BMW found that the uh, last generation of the 7 Series, what I like to refer to as the uh, the brick uh, 7 Series, the E38s, they, had, they were starting to get too many buttons. There were too many buttons on the dashboard, center console, even on the roof if I'm not mistaken. And so how to consolidate all those buttons into one, and that's how the iDrive was born. See, the, the road's a bit bumpy, but the car is so nice. Okay, bad, bad area. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> so yeah, they consolidated all those buttons into the iDrive. But before that, cars like the E46 were the turning point. That's when they started getting into it. So the E36, which is the car I'm driving right now, it's a 318i E36 with a four-cylinder 1.8-litre engine, naturally aspirated, uh, no turbocharger, no supercharger, nothing. Wow, this road is... Oh, now we're coming to some pay from wool. <laughs> but the suspension is really working great on this car. Don't forget, I put those spring buffers. They helped a lot. They really did. I changed the rear suspension, uh, shock absorbers to Bilstein's. Uh, just OEM replacement Bilstein's, if I'm not mistaken, they were the B, B something, B16, B14, something like that. OEM replacement, black color, not the yellow ones, which are the performance type. I wanted some comfort because don't forget, this car was supposed to be my daily driver. But I have realized now that a daily driver, if I'm really gonna do the daily drive thing, I need an automatic. But hell before a CBT. No, no CBTs. Sorry. I think I just made myself a little bit dizzy there. That's not good. So no CBTs. But I recently acquired something with a regular torque converter automatic gearbox. And you shall be privy to that very, very soon. My garage, oh my god. Shall I rename my, shall I rename my YouTube channel to Chris's Garage? Oh, you know, I, I don't know. Oh, um, a lot of you have been actually commenting that uh, my channel reminds you of Hoobie's Garage. And I take that as a compliment. Thank you. I love that guy, um, Tyler. He's really, really good. And we seem to be sama kepala tau. Because he is doing pretty much the same thing that, that I'm doing. Or I'm doing pretty much the same thing that he's doing. I think he's been doing it longer for than I than I have, or maybe not, because my last new car was in '98. But anyway, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter who was first, who was last. Uh, the thing is, we both seem to share the same passion um, for picking up. Well, I don't want to say clunkers. I don't want to say junks, but pre-loved, pre-loved old school classics. How's that? How's that? Okay. Yeah, we seem to have a penchant. Uh, for doing that, 
and uh, yeah, I've been watching his channel. It's great. I, I really, I really like the way he he does his delivery and uh, keeps things light. You know, kind of like the way I do it. You know, telling you guys car jokes and all that. I uh, thank you very much for the Mazda. Uh, which which car does uh, Tarzan love to to drive? Uh, the Mazda three two three. <laughs> I've forgotten about that one. That one's been around since uh, I was still in school. I think. In fact, I think that one's been around since the Mazda three two three was new. But anyway. So yeah, should I rename my, my channel Chris's Garage or something like that? I mean, Jay Leno's Garage, I, I don't want to copy him. I mean, he is in, on a different level. I mean, he's in a different echelon, a freaking different planet insofar as his garage is concerned. <laughs> Check out Jay Leno's Garage, you won't believe it. I think more closer to home, more closer to me, um, yeah, Hoovy's Garage is pretty damn close in terms of uh, what, what uh, he does and what I do. And uh, yeah, I really enjoy watching his channel. So yeah, maybe one of these days I'll just rename my channel to Chris's Garage. Uh, um, I'm still doing new cars, I'm still doing new car reviews, and uh, I'm still covering motoring events, of course. There's a Ducati launch that I went to yesterday, the video's coming up soon. But um, yeah, I feel like um, the most fun that I have, and I still love my job, but the most fun that I have is actually doing what I'm doing right now, which is uh, heading out of town, um, a ridiculous amount of, uh, of uh, kilometers to go just to see a car, and um, which can't even start. So while I'm driving, I'm thinking, how am I going to get this car back to, to where I am? And um, I called up my friend Sam, who has a flatbed tow truck. And uh, first thing he said, you matter. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. But uh, yeah, it's going to cost about 500 ringgit to go all the way to Sabah Burnham, pick up this car and bring it back to, uh, bring it back to town. <coughs> That's not a problem, actually. I was expecting more. And I think I'm gonna be hit by a, another pretty big tow bill. But no, nah, damn it. After my recent Samui Duro hashtag Samui Duro drive, I stopped by. Yeah, the, if you check out my community section, there's a there's a picture of the Bluebird, uh, which performed brilliantly, by the way. There's a picture of the of the Bluebird next to an Ayanira store. I love Ayanira. Okay, um, it's so amazing, and you can only get it up north, I think, uh, or the east coast. So I stopped over in Burles, uh, somewhere near Kanga, actually very near the Padang Besar border, to uh, check out something. And um, that one's drivable. That one's drivable. And, and get this, it's never left Kedah. That car belonged to uh, Pakci, who unfortunately passed away. Uh, rest in peace, sir. But the, the, uh, the, the, transfer ship, uh, of, the transfer of ownership was done to his son before he passed on. And so the car is all the way up in Kanga, and it's drivable. It's never left Perlis. It's only been around there to the Pasa uh, to to um, to visit his friends. And I think the the um, the current owner told me that the furthest he's ever gone is actually Kanga, and it's never been out of that area. It's all original, accident-free. The body is paint is nicely patinaed. I mean, it looks like a matte finish because it's that faded. It's original paint, and when he put the key in and he started it on the first crank. I was pretty much sold because that's a car that I'm going to drive back from Kanga Perlis all the way to KL for a car that's never left I'm going to drive it for the first time back to PJ yeah so that one's a drivable this one that I'm going to see right now is a towaway now I've always told myself don't buy a towaway and I think I've advised you of this as well but if it ever possible have a test drive well this car can crank, starter motor's turning, but something's just not kicking the engine to life. I, I reckon it's possibly the uh, fuel pump or the AC pump or something like that. Hopefully it's something simple that will be simple to fix. But what I've done is, and one, one thing that you should you should do as well, is actually try to find a mechanic who is, who is um, familiar with the model of car that you're going to buy because if there's anything going wrong with it or go, going to happen to it, at least he will know how to suss it out and he will know how to sort it out. Um, I had a chat with my mechanic who is uh, a specialist in uh, KE20s, KE30s, KE35, KE36s, whatever. And uh, he said, no problem, no problem whatsoever. He can, uh, this, this car is so easy to do, he could probably do it blindfolded and he's very familiar with them. For your information, it's the same guy I went to see the uh, KE36 wagon that was sold on the same day. The guy just bought the, wanted the number WM 1918. So yeah, it's the same guy. I found out he's a, he's very, very good with these old school Toyotas, uh, KE70s even. Um, yeah, so anyway, 
Got a tow it from there to his place. So should I get a tow away? I've, my very first W126, if you remember my, my uh, story um, earlier, was a tow away. And I told myself from that day, never ever to, again to buy a tow away. And uh, it looks like I might be doing that actually, because um, hmm, this one might be worth getting. It's already got the wheels that I really, really love for old school Japanese JDM uh, cars. Those slot mags, or as my, um, or you, they call it in Bahasa, it's uh, Rimanko. Yeah, all those slot mags. They look like dolly birds. You don't know what I mean? Just Google it, slot mags or dolly birds, and you'll see the rim design that I that I like. So yeah, I would have bought those rims. I would have scoured the whole of Malaysia for those rims for this particular car if I if I wanted to, if I was going to get it. And uh, it's 50-50 right now. I got to go and see the car right now. Like I said, there are no photos of the interior. I don't know what the interior is like. The exterior looks good, but like I've always said, get the one with the best interior because interiors are harder to restore than exteriors. The one up in Perlis has a very nicely worn interior and I'm being so nice about it right now, okay? Because that car is 42 freaking years old. Yes, 1976 or 77 or something ridiculous like that. That is uh, older than my Alfetta. So if I get that fella up in Perlis, it will be the oldest car in my garage. Yeah, it would. Because the record right now for, for the oldest car in my garage is my Mercedes-Benz W108 280S, uh, which I drove to the buyer in Penang. So that was from 1968. It's the only car I've ever owned that was the same age as moi, me, yes. So if I get this, this car up north, in Perlis, I'm still cracking my brain now how I'm gonna do this because I mean, I wanna drive the car back, which means I gotta either take a bus or a train or a pay a friend to drive me up there. Anybody wanna drive me up there? <laughs> we would have to leave at midnight, reach there by about seven or eight, pick up the car and then drive back. It would be a good 20 hour day, I reckon, because on the way back, I reckon it's gonna take about 10 hours. I'm gonna stop a lot to make sure that the uh, the car is okay. Don't forget, I mean, this is like you getting up from bed in the morning and then running a marathon, 26 kilometers, without even warming up or anything. Uh, you could die. So yeah, the car could die. But uh, it will be one hell of an adventure. It'll make a hell of a story. Yes, it would. So stay tuned for that. Stay tuned for this. This is going to be quite interesting. I'm going to show this to you in a while, okay? So you all take care and uh, go check out Ruby's Garage and uh, check out a few more of my videos. And uh, I gotta get in touch with that guy. I think, I think he and I could click quite well. <laughs> okay, y'all, you take care. Bye-bye. How's it going, folks? So as you can see, I'm in a place where they really know their vehicles. Look at this beautiful, beautiful CG125. Isn't that amazing or what? And this beautiful Iswara over here, nicely, nicely taken care of. Obviously the same owner because he's painted it the same color. But yeah, I'm here to see this. Yeah, folks, this is a KE30, Toyota KE30, and I uh, found it online, actually. The car has been parked under this shade for quite some time. <coughs> Sorry, most of its life, to be, in fact, to be uh, more precise. Look at the interior. It needs a bit of a spruce up, but hey, very, very possible. Now, the problem with this car is that it's got a problem with the engine. It overheated the other day, and uh, uh, water has gone into the engine, so... This is one of the things you need to look for. Uh, yeah, the car can't start. It doesn't have a battery. It's been sent for. It's been sent for charging. But one good thing about this KE30, check out the wheels. Yeah, these are the slot mags that I would definitely have put on this car if I had gotten them. So it needs four new tires. That one's flat. The others are okay. But it needs bodywork as well. I mean, yeah, definitely it needs bodywork. I just check the undercarriage. There's no holes in the floorboard, which is great. See, that's the thing about these cars, if they're not parked on grass or, and they're parked away from the elements, you can still get them in conditions like this. Let's not forget this car is 41 years old. Check that out. Look at those slot mags. That's worth the price of driving over here, for sure. I'll show you the interior now. Very, very old school. The seats have been re-upholstered. But check out the old school diesel Kiki aircon. <laughs> uh, the owner actually painted the uh, the dashboard to match the the color of the car outside. This is very much a 
Fiat Coupe kind of trick where you paint the uh, dashboard to match the, uh, the outside the uh, meters there very very cool very very old school absolutely adore these rims on the car look at that rim manko slot mags they look very good on JDM old school cars so here's the problem this engine needs an overhaul it's already got a KN filter but I'll show you what I mean right now if I can get the dipstick out there we go so see that's the condition of the oil it's like yeah Milo ice data rate so in many many other countries this car would be a write-off because they would not bother fixing it up then again we are not in many other countries and I am not a regular person so here you go yeah lots of potential this car definitely if I get it I was thinking about painting it golf colors too nice number plate WQ192 coincidentally my Alfetta back home is also WQ 6257 so yeah this might make a very very nice addition to my garage if things work out you might actually see this in Chris's garage very very soon head southeast then make a u-turn one of the things I love most about this car check out this fuel filler cap which looks like it's from a from a motorbike very characteristic of the KEs from this generation brilliant absolutely brilliant and those rims just set the whole car off so yeah drove a hundred kilometers to come and see 150 kilometers to come and see this and uh, parked under the roof it's been out of the elements very faded but that's what the red used to look like easily done very very easily done there we go probably get some new rear lights for it see the thing I've always told you about if it's really really bad out here fret not because this car it indicates it's accident free these this plastic is more than 40 years old more than four decades old yeah Sabah Burnham represent so there you go folks Toyota KE30 from 1978 fantastic so stay tuned don't know what's gonna happen but uh, let's hope for the best okay you all take care bye well 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 the car gods they be taunting me folks they really be taunting me I'm on my way back after checking out the KE30 just now and I'm driving by and I'm like Whoa! check this out this is for sale at a, a bengkel actually a workshop and it's got the slot mags tires are inflated the interior is in original condition can you see that the dashboard's not painted that's the original steering wheel now that's the deal maker right there the two spoke original KE30 steering wheel but yeah original condition look at the the, the um, the, the rear lights are badly faded. WJ, that was the uh, alphabet on my mom's Ford Escort, WJ3817. So this car, wow. Yeah, and it's still got this uh, really nice filler cap. But the interior, holy cow, look at this. This is amazing, look at the dashboard. The dashboard is uh, original. Yeah, okay, the top part is a bit cracked. Can you see the crack? You can't. Okay, but wow, this car is in very, very good condition. It's been painted. Bumpers are chrome. The, the chrome is still nice. It's still straight. It's got these little bits here which are always, always getting lost. Yeah, it's been parked under in a shade as well. Oh, yes, that's an Alfa Romeo 146 right here. But this is. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, it's getting windy. Look at that. Wow. What a surprise. I mean, I made a U-turn on the highway. A legal, a legal U-turn. I made a legal U-turn on the highway and I came back here and there's no signboard. This place is just an actual bengkel for, for old school cars, I think. But this one's all been done up. 
So yeah, stay tuned and I'll let you know how this goes. If anyone's interested, let me know. Let me know in the comments. Okay, time to talk to the guy.